even if it caused your lot to be a street sweep. Go on out and sweep streets like Michelangelo painted his picture. Sweep streets like Handel and Beethoven composed music. Sweep streets like Shakespeare wrote portraits. Sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will have to pause and say, Here lived the great street sweeper who swept his job well. If you can't be a pine on the top of the hill, be a scrub in the valley on the side of the rill. If you can't be a highway, just be a trail. If you can't be the sun, be a star. It isn't by size that you win or you fail. Be the best of whatever you are. We adopt the means of nonviolence because our end is a community at peace with itself. We will try to persuade with our words. But if our work is failed, we will try to persuade with our actions. We will always be willing to talk and see fair compromise. But we are ready to suffer when necessary, and even risk our lives to become witnesses to the truth as we see it. Nonviolent resistance also provides a creative force through which men can channelize their discontent. It does not require that they abandon their discontent. This discontent is sound and healthy. But nonviolence saves it from degenerating into morbid bitterness and hatred. Hate is always tragic. It is as injurious to the hater as it is to the hated. And psychiatrists are telling us now that many of the inner conflicts and strange things that happen in the subconscious are rooted in hate. So they are now saying, love or perish. And this is the beauty of nonviolence. It says you can struggle without hate. You can fight war without violence. And it is my great hope that as the Negro plunges deeper into the quest for freedom, he will plunge even deeper into the philosophy of nonviolence.